Hello guys and welcome back. In this video it's going to be a bit personal. I'm going to talk to you about how I managed to cure my depression. A lot of guys have asked in the comments to kind of discuss work-life balance, getting down mentally, you know. We all we all get depressed. That's the thing. Depression has become a little bit of a blanket statement. If somebody hasn't got a Lamborghini in a mansion, they're like I'm depressed. It's you know, depression isn't not getting an iPhone for Christmas. Depression is an actual mental state that you need to get on top of. And uh, it has many factors that I'm going to get into today. And I'm going to talk to you about how I cured my my own depression. Now, I was at a point where I was kind of just crippled. Everything had gone wrong in my life. I just felt mentally drained. It it causes physical weakness. Like everything feels numb and weak. And my, my neck was aching. My back was aching. My, like even my hands were aching. They were just tingling. They felt weak, like muscle fatigue. And I knew something wasn't right in multiple areas of my life. So... um. The first thing I did to tackle all of this is I started talking a shit ton. I started talking to people about it. I started expressing how I felt, which I'd never done before. And this really is a massive step, guys. And one thing I did was got a counselor. And I only did three sessions, but I spoke to this counselor. And she was fantastic. And she, the conclusion she drew towards the end was that I'd always been the best at everything that I'd done when I was younger. And I had so much pressure to be successful and be great and whatever. And like I said in a previous video, kind of keep up with the Joneses. And if I wasn't the best at everything in every area, I was getting annoyed. I was getting frustrated. I was really getting, I, I felt, I didn't feel proud about myself. And she said to me a couple of words. She just said, it's okay not to be the best at everything. And hearing that for the first time in my life, I was like, Shit, yeah, I I actually think she's right. You know, I've I, I've never actually heard that before. It, it took me a couple of seconds to let it sink in, but immediately there was like a wash of relief down my neck, like tingles, like some ASMR shit. And I just felt fantastic. I was like, what? Why have I never realized that before? She was like, your life's not gone where you want it to go yet. You're still working on getting it to where you want it to go. You know, you it is what it is. She was like, everybody is good at some stuff and not good at other things. And if you're not the best, she was like, people aren't going to care. It's not a problem. She was like, nobody's relying on you to be like some billionaire and whatever. And it kind of took the stress away. And immediately I was like, yeah, I do have flaws. I can be bad at stuff and be not proud, but okay with that. I'm okay with being average in some areas. And I know at the start it says it's not okay to be average, but you can't be good at everything, guys. You really can't be. And there's, there is nothing wrong with being average as long as you are working on it to become better. As long as you want to work on it. You know, I, I'm terrible at ice skating. I don't give a fuck. I'll fall over and laugh my bollocks off. I bruise on my elbows and my knees. I think it's kind of funny. Um, I'm probably better now because I've done a lot of leg days. We'll test it in a video one day. It might be quite funny if I keep falling over. Um, I had a few embarrassing dates doing that shit. Um, but yeah, it, when I heard that, I was like, yeah, it's fine it's fine. I I don't need to worry anymore. I don't need to worry about like, why, why do you have to be a millionaire at 30? Why at 25 do you have to have your whole life together? Why at 50 do you have to be a billionaire? Like this, why are we setting these targets? It's like, it's personal journey. Just enjoy it along the way. And that relief really set me on the path to where I wanted to go. Now, the second thing that really helped me is walking. I went outside as much as possible. And, um, even now to this day, if I start getting depressed or down or, you know, we all get that feeling where, especially in lockdown, guys, that's why I'm making this video because second lockdown's coming. I, I did predict it. I can't tell you how. I can't tell you how I knew because this video will get banned. Um, but second lockdown, and that's why I built the gym for anybody who was saying, oh, you know, gym equipment's a bit shit. Can't you afford a gym membership? Well, you know, actions speak louder than words sometimes. And, um, the thing that I found was when I go for a walk, it released, it, it just kind of gave me a new lease on life. Like I was outside, I was around people, I was around activity. I could see different things, there's different scenarios, like being in a prison cell otherwise. And even now, like I said, during lockdown, there will be times when people are down, people are sad. Honestly, go for a walk, go for a walk. Just get outside, go for a walk, go for an hour, whatever it might be, go somewhere different, try and pick a new scenario maybe go with somebody talk put your headphones in and talk about stuff that's completely unrelated to what you're doing right now as well like just change the subject do something different I was always stressed over business I got out and walked and I yeah I talked about my problems sometimes to different people but I'd like to get outside and just talk about different things in life 
you know, distract yourself, go and do something different, go and take the focus off you, you know, everybody believes that they're the hero of their own story, which is good, and they believe that the whole world's watching them, and there's a spotlight on them, I found the best relief when I went and watched, like, my cousin play football, or I went and watched my friend do something, or I went and turned up at a random rugby pitch, and I just watched 15 lads smash into 15 lads and I was just like this is cool you know they're the focus now I'm going to watch them there was a lot of sport in my area so I was able to do that but for you it might be something else it might be street performers in London somebody busking and you're like you know what's your story what's your life what's what's going on with you like put the focus on other people you're not the most important person in the world and when you do that that detachment from your 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 super ego as most people have makes you feel really good it makes you feel really good because you realize other people are in the world. They matter too. And it takes the importance off of your off of your struggle. You know, you're thinking, why me? Woe is me. The world's awful. It's like you go and meet other people. They're dealing with shit too. He's got problems. She's got problems. Their problems are worse than yours. Not as bad as yours. Like there's a whole range of people in the world doing different shit. Somebody's mum just died. Yours didn't, you know. But you're in depression. They're not. Like it's a it's a funny world it's just there's different shit going on but when you detach from you being the most important thing in the world you feel a lot better and i think getting out and walking and saying you know cause let's say example if i was stressed right now and i was depressed and oh this is not going right that's not going right well i'm mulling in my own shit i'm just stuck here in my own shit and to me right now i'm the most important thing in the world that's why when people have kids usually they lose that ego you go out for a walk and you go and see what other people are doing you're like oh yeah i, I don't matter in the big picture, I don't matter. I'm just an extra cog. You know, I'm working on my own shit, but it really doesn't matter. I'm just a cog in the wheel. Like, I take that importance away from yourself and drop your ego. It feels so, so good, guys. Now, the next one is um, the gym. So, the the gym has to be done, guys. The gym has to be done. Number one, for testosterone purposes, low testosterone is linked to depression. I don't care what anybody says. Everybody who's got depression has low testosterone. As soon as you change your lifestyle and lift heavy shit, guys, compound lifts, start bench press, squats, deadlifts, you do things like this, you're nowhere near as depressed as you were before. Number one, because you're healthier and your body is moving forward. You're getting some advancement in life. But number two, because your testosterone goes through the roof and you just feel fucking great. And it, train early in the morning, get up in the morning, train at 5, 6 a.m., get up early, this is one of the big things I did, I'd wake up on a Saturday, it's especially a Saturday, especially weekends, guys, because in the week, you might have a purpose, you might have something going on, but on a Saturday, wake up at 5 a.m., hit the gym for an hour or two, by 7, you're washed, changed, fed, whatever, go out for a walk, get out early, get a head start on the day, then go and do something, like I'd go and watch a rugby match with my uncle, I'd come back, and then I'd work on my business, and I was like, okay, like things are, like my life's got a purpose now, like I'm doing things, I'm moving forward, I feel like I ran the day, I conquered the day, I'm not just watching the clock go around and panicking, and that helped me massively, so honestly guys, if you're not in the gym lifting heavy shit, just immediately do it, and all these gyms are about to be closed, just please just buy like a kettlebell or something, or go out and do some sprints, or I was I was doing pull-ups. I was going on the monkey bars or you grab like a tree trunk, like a quite a level, strong one. So watch out, be careful and just do some pull-ups and stuff. Pull-ups to squats. You could squat down, jump up, pull up. Like there's so many routines you could do that I was doing. That's how I built my back. My back got really big. As you've seen in the first episode of the journey, my fitness journey, that sort of shit gets, keeps you going, guys. And in lockdown, this will be especially important to just fight, just get a heavy kettlebell or something like fill up some rucksacks with some weights and do some squats with a broom brush or something, just figure it out, get some heavy water bottles and do some curls, like Steve's done some videos on this before, it's massive guys, the next one is to stop competing, so when you judge yourself based on what other people are doing, it's it's just unfair on you because it's your own life and your own journey, and I was looking at people's ages a lot. I was looking at people who were around my age. I was like, what have they accomplished? What have they done? Where are they in life? Or how have they got a house? And they, just don't do that, guys. It's just the wrong thing to do. And it doesn't matter that in like f like five years later, I was more successful than them. And I'm like, oh, things are all right. That's not the purpose. That's not, that's not the point here. The point isn't that it'll be all right because you're going to be more successful than them. The point is it doesn't fucking matter. It doesn't matter how successful you are, how successful they are, what they have, what you have. It really doesn't matter unless you're unless you're competing with them in a business sense. Like if it was me and the owner of GQ was my age or something, I'd be like, I want to cut that guy's head off 
metaphorically and take all their profits but when it's friends and family and stuff like that it's don't worry about it guys like don't be competing with other people like oh your cousin's the same age look what they've accomplished you haven't done it yet it's just your journey is what you want to do you know everyone figures it out at a different stage if you put too much focus on that and you use other people and age, age is a big one if you use age as a barometer by 25 i should have had a mortgage by now by 30 i should be a millionaire like that shit will fuck you up because number one that unrealistic timelines most people, like 99% of the world's population at 30 aren't millionaires, okay? So don't worry about that. And most people who are telling you you should have your life sorted don't have their sorted. So don't worry about that again. But just take that stress away from yourself, guys. Just let it all go. 50 is the new 20. Like, we're living that long now. Like, 50 to 60 are fantastic years. If you're in great shape and you're healthy, you can live like a 20-year-old. Like, it's so easy. So there's really no need to stress. And when you lose that kind of pressure, it feels so good. And the next one is to find a purpose. I was lucky because I had my business, but I really focused in on it when I was depressed. I got depressed because of my business being deleted, but I really, really, really focused in on it and said, okay, I'm going to build myself back up and I'm going to do it the right way this time. And I'm only going to do things that I love. And I'm going to, you know, I'm going to focus on this business, like I said, in the right way. I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to hustle back for money. I wanted to do it to help people, to build something solid, which is why you're seeing this business today if you're watching this video. And it felt good, you know, giving back to people and always focusing on the user. That's why today and everything I do, I try and do for free for you guys. There's no ads on these videos. The products that I make are valued at a stupidly low price because I want to help, I want to give back. And then the reciprocation will drive me to my dream life. And that's just the way to do it. Just have a purpose. Just find something. There's so many people working nine to five jobs, coming home every night, and literally Netflix is their girlfriend or their boyfriend. That's how they're living. Just Netflix, oh, just get me through another three hours before I have to sleep and do all this again. I used to work with people at factories when I was a lot younger who didn't want weekends to come along. Oh, weekends are boring. I'm just going to do overtime and work here. Weekends are pointless. What do you do? Just sit at home in front of the TV. You're going to get depressed, guys. Life is going to feel meaningless. Like, find something that you love, even if it's non-profit, and just do that as a hobby because that will keep you motivated and you give back to others. Like, I, if I had more time, when I was in London, I had a real agenda to clean up the canals. They were disgusting. I really wanted to go down and clean them up and get a load of people together, non-profit, and help out because it was disgusting. It was a horrible environment. There's fish dying every single day. I was like, we need to do something about this. Had I had more time, I would have executed on that, and I probably will in the future. And that will keep me going. Now, the next one is uh, to be mentally aware. So you need to be mentally aware of your flaws. Like I said, when that woman said it's okay not to be good at everything, I became mentally aware of what I wasn't good at, my weaknesses and my strengths, and I became honest with myself. So I remember saying, like, like I was saying to people, yeah, I'm, like, I'm not very good at that. Or I don't want to do that. I don't feel comfortable. I'm actually quite insecure in that sense. Or I'm not happy with doing that. I don't feel comfortable. Like, I started expressing how I felt. And instead of being one of those men who's like, suppress emotions, never cry. I just was honest about everything. I was like, no, if I'm honest, I don't feel happy. I don't feel comfortable. I'm actually a little bit scared to do that. Oh, okay. Why? And then you get to the bottom of things. And this is one thing we don't do as men. But when I started doing that, I became more self-aware, more mentally aware of who I was, what I actually enjoyed, what I actually liked, who I really wanted to be. You know, do you want to go out for 12 pints and get drunk out of your head on a Friday night? No, no, actually, I'm quite creative. I actually quite like drama. I actually quite like art. I actually quite like stuff like crafts. And I actually like editing videos i like doing things that uh, i like making body language analysis videos like i don't want to go out and get drunk you know if somebody said to me would you rather go to the theater and watch a show they all get drunk with the boys honestly like 10 years ago i would have been like the boys the boys now i'd be like theater 100 percent theater and a glass of wine or something i picked that a hundred times in a row and i didn't give a fuck what people thought about that and i still don't today you know it doesn't matter and Finding who you are, your identity, and what you want to represent is one of the nicest feelings in the world. And that comes from becoming self-aware, mentally aware. And honestly, guys, just being honest with yourself is massive. And the final one, I think, might be the most important, is porn and masturbation. You would not believe... I'm just checking the time. Sorry, guys. Um, you would not believe how many guys, if they quit porn and masturbation and started lifting weights, their depression would go away in a week. So... 
I remember in the real early days before I started my business, I had some problems with porn and masturbation. And when things went wrong, you start delving back into these things, don't you, again? So like five, six years ago, I really, I, I took a, I went down that dark path again and I started looking into these things and it's kind of your only comfort, right? And it makes things 100% worse, guys, because as soon as you ejaculate, you lose that kind of motivation for life, that buzz, that drive. And if you do it via porn or, you know, just thought masturbation or looking at pictures or whatever, it can become draining. Your testosterone will drop. Your dopamine will go down. And this is the big one is you get dopamine saturation. So every let's say you, you wake up in the morning at 5 a.m., when your dopamine receptors are normal, you'll be like, oh, 5 a.m., fantastic. This is great. I'm up early. And you know, and you get a buzz from that. The dopamine receptors pick up on dopamine. Good. I feel fantastic. You know, you go downstairs, you see, oh, the cupboards are full. Bang, you know, dopamine rush. When your dopamine receptors are saturated because you've been watching so much porn, which produces a ridiculous amount of dopamine, 5 a.m., you get up and you're just like, oh, another day. Like, being up early is a positive to some people. Being up early to other people is just like, mm, whatever. You know, it doesn't feel like anything. Go downstairs, the cupboards are full, and you're like, bang, you know, dopamine rush. That makes me feel good. It makes me feel good that there's food in my cupboard. I'm naming simple things here, guys, on purpose because I'm showing you what it means. Somebody with who's been watching porn and masturbating a lot, the cupboard's being full compared to porn. The gap is enormous. You know, porn is way much better. Masturbation is way much better. Ejaculation, so much better than just seeing that you have four yogurts and, a, and bread in the cupboards. When your dopamine receptors are normal, your brain will go, oh, wow, brilliant. And th you get this positive effect repeating all the time. It's like if you're watching porn and masturbation all the time, payday doesn't feel as good. Scoring a goal doesn't feel as good. Talking to a real woman doesn't feel as good. Once you drop all this shit, your testosterone goes back up your mind resets itself, it reprograms itself, and smaller things become more exciting. Like me making this video right now on a Sunday makes me massively happy. You know, I've got the light, it's a blue, beautiful blue day out that window, you can't see, but the light is coming in, it's shining on me, I'm looking out, I feel positive, I feel optimistic about the future. Had I just watched porn for three or four hours, my dopamine would be absolutely saturated, had I ejaculated, I probably, number one, I probably wouldn't be motivated to make this video. Number two, my energy would be off. You'd feel it through the camera. I'd just be some weak, floppy version of myself in two ways. Um, but also, I wouldn't be looking up and going, wow, look look how beautiful it is. Autumn's really here. You know, the, the leaves are changing. The blue sky's coming in. It's like one of those crisp autumn days. Beautiful, you know. Oh, Christmas is coming up. Yeah, we're on lockdown, but it's a lot of time. Like, I feel positive about things because my dopamine like I see that blue sky and I get happy like I, I can feel a dopamine rush in my head I can feel my emotions changing for the good for the positive you don't get that when you watch porn and you masturbate and I honestly think after quitting porn and not masturbating it probably takes two weeks to get rid of your depression you feel that much better immediately or at least alleviate it to some extent then you start walking then you find a purpose then you hit the gym it's all things that everybody could be doing you talk to people you become self-aware that's what did it for me, guys. That combination of things that I just mentioned. And I hope, and bearing in mind, I was at a point where I was sat on my bed crying, thumping the wall, considering suicide. Like going up to tall buildings and just thinking about who would miss me and coming to the conclusion that people's lives would be better off without me. That is the extent that I got to, guys. So if anybody thinks, oh, maybe you just didn't have very bad depression, I was bad. Like I didn't think I was coming back at some points. And today I get those feelings creeping back in, but on a, such a small level, and I dispel them immediately. My brain just goes, oh, no, it's just a bad day. You know, business has been tough today. This hasn't gone right. That hasn't gone right. It doesn't mean I'm depressed. It just means I'm just not in a, as good mood as possible. It's natural. It's natural emotions. Things don't always go perfectly well. Okay, you know, take it on the chin, move forward. Look at all the things you can be grateful for. And that's because now mentally I'm just a lot more positive and I have all those things that I mentioned going on in my life and it's easier to handle everything. But it just makes it easy for me to never slip away. And the other thing that helps as well is staying away from alcohol, drugs, etc. I think smoking weed is not bad. You know, I still do that occasionally, like once a month. But all the other drugs, like if you're just doing like cocaine or heroin, of course, that's going to fuck you up. But alcohol too. 
cigarettes, alcohol, whatever, they, they, they fuck up your brain, especially alcohol, because you're gonna get, you're gonna feel better when you're on the alcohol. You're gonna get this rush, and the next morning you can feel down. And I could be, I could be having the best year of my life, be fantastic. I go out for drinks. I wake up the next day. I'm like, where's my life going? I'm, I'm ruining my life. I'm going nowhere in life. So stay clean, stay fresh-minded. The best cure for depression, in my opinion, is a 5 a.m. alarm clock. You get up. You accomplish shit. You tick boxes. You have a purpose. Don't masturbate. Don't watch porn hit the gym, you know, tick all these boxes early on in the day, the rest of the day seems to follow suit and you get luckier, you just get luckier, you start feeling more positive and take the attention off of you, go out, see what other people are doing in their lives, call an old friend and say, just want to know how your life's going, how's it getting, like ask questions, ask more questions about other people, as soon as you start doing that and you help others, you take that attention away from you and suddenly your ego disappears, you're not the most important person in the world, and I'll leave you with that, guys. But good luck with your, uh, I say good luck with your depression. You know, it's a weird thing to say, but it really is a good luck thing because it's a fight. It's a real thing. It's a mental illness, but it can be overcome. I've done it and I was in a real bad place and I'm there for you guys. So if you want to send me a message or something in the comments, I'll be there to help because it was the toughest experience of my life and uh, I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy.